How you doing? Hi, Donald. Homer, rancher. Tour beyond. How's it going on? Oh. Uh, oh boy. Um before we get started today, it's sort of like what I did is that I uh, I got out some examples of movements from different levels, and I, I think I've identified uh, three of them, three levels of movements that we can talk about, and and their relative qualities. So. So that's going to do today. Um, oh, good. Thanks, Donald. I, I'm glad everything's working again. What is what is the Washington football team called now? <laughs> what some Washington fan? The, I, I forgot what they're called. Um, the Washington, I call them the senators, like the old baseball team. Okie doke. Um, what I want to take a look at it, is that it there's, um, and I'm not picking on, I don't know, like what they call the sort of these micro um, brands. I'm not talking about, I'm not picking on micro brands, but I was thinking about it. Hi, Mark. Um, and a micro brands, one of the things that seem to show up a lot in micro brands, when you look at the, the dial, it's not quite right. Uh, there's something about it that doesn't look the way you want it to look necessarily. And, and I've seen that and I, uh, other features of it, I, uh, um, haven't really to to be honest i haven't spent a lot of time playing with them because i'm they're not too interesting and what they're trying to do and and i think this is this is normal okay that what a what a normal uh watch enterprise would do uh would be to put together a watch have enough uh have the the manufacturing price low enough uh, so that they could sell it at a certain target price. Okay, and one way to do that, unfortunately, is you start cutting corners where you can. And so I wanted to start with where I I think the best place to start is with all all of these, just with the movement, and this movement. Uh, right here, you can't, this is, should have, I've got its twin brother right here. I bought two identical movements uh, from this, uh, it's, a, it's from a Chinese movement maker. And I think this is a, a homage to the ETA, the Unitis ETA 6498 or 97. It's usually one or the other. And the reason I got two identical ones, I'm going to take my uh, Dremel tool and cut here and see if I can put them close enough together to create resonance. I mean, that's basically the reason I got them. In the past, I have got very inexpensive um such movements uh to create watches now what are you going to do with a uh, a cheap watch with a with a great big um case to it what i suggest i i i i think that everybody who is serious about watch collection ought to do that there's there's there are a lot of really good online uh shows about how to make your own watch and the reason i think that's important is is that it, it'll give you perspective of, of what's involved usually you know you got a case you have a movement you have a dial and you have some hands 
and there are a few tricks to put them together and you have to know a few things about how to poke certain places or unscrew certain screws so you can remove uh, the stem and put things together and then put the stem back in and cut the stem and a few things like that. That's all there is to create a walk. But I, and I think you can do it for not very much money. You go to some place like AliExpress, easy to put together a very inexpensive walk. But the reason I think it's important to do it is that you have sort of a baseline when you're, you start thinking about it. Um, a while back, I bought a Soprod A10, and a Soprod A10 is, is somewhat of an unusual movement. The, the thing that's unusual about it is, is that it was built to fit an ETA, God, I forgot the number on it, 2982, I don't know what it was, it was a very popular movement. And uh, but the the movement itself was by Seiko. Uh, it was Seiko's attempt to enter into high horology, and their first attempt at it wasn't uh, was I think it was called a 4L movement, and it had problems with it because on the one hand, I mean it worked great and it still does. By the way, it, it wasn't that. Instead, what it was was that the typical Seiko buyer wasn't used to paying that higher price. And so they, it just didn't work too well. So they went to, um, oh boy, let me see, who was it? I think it was Pear, uh, Pear Rhett. Oh, no, 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 they went to Soprod, uh, a company called Soprod. And uh, they gave Soprod all the information and Soprod came out with EA-10. And which was essentially the Seiko 4L in a case that would fit the 2892. I think that's it. Real popular, excellent uh, movement. And the difference that I found between my Soprod uh, and my what <laughs> the ones that I usually break uh, between these. The quality was so much better. There was really very good quality on everything from even a, a, a little on glage and some, some other kinds of features to it that were, that were really good. Now, the, the third one that I got, I'm still playing with, uh, this is a Vosher. I don't know if you can see it, uh, where it says Vosher on it and everything. That is what basically is a dummy uh, dial on it. Uh, the dial has a bunch of holes and things like that in it in case, you know, for different kinds of things that you might want to do. Now, the price wise, I think that the Soprod was, I think it was maybe around $100 or something like that. The one from uh, the one I got at AliExpress from China was like 20 bucks maybe. And this one, and it's got a, um, a micro uh, rotor in the back. It's an automatic. This, I think, was around twelve hundred uh, dollars. All right. So you have three different uh, levels. And I, by the way, too, I I wind it up all the time to make sure that everything works. This thing keeps perfect time. Uh, the other one I'm <laughs> been still working on. And so the the question is, I guess, is that at some point. You you get to to a place where the where the movement does the job. I mean, uh, a lot of a lot of the movements that I got from AliExpress haven't worked right, which may have more to do with the pretentious watchmaker than the uh, than the movement itself. Some of them have worked great. the uh, The one that I got the Soprod is fabulous, and some of the the watches, I think I have a watch. Yeah, I had some watches with um, ETA 2892s in them, and they work great too. Uh, my my Dandy has that as a base, and on top of it is the Aganor, um, and or and inside it are the Agon, uh, Aganor Agonese uh, gears in it. 
but below underneath it is this movement that works great. It keeps great time and everything else. But it's not sort of the 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 more elite level, we'll say. But the difference in the prices is is considerable. Um, this one, the Vacher thousand five hundred. The uh, Soprod are, are actually you can have a good grade ETA twenty eight ninety two. Those are around a hundred bucks. Depends on where you find them and what kind of shape they're in. And then these the ones uh, from AliExpress that are uh, Chinese based. For the most part, they're they're knockoffs of one of the ETAs, and some are quite good and some are not so much. Uh, but in terms of a hierarchy, it's as clear as a bell. And the question is, is that how much is is enough? I mean, you have the you have cases, uh, and cases are simply hunks of steel that you can fit in your 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 movement. And some of them, like this one, have a, uh, an exhibition window in the back. But how much different is that? <laughs> we paid a whole lot uh, for the special case that we had made in creating a watch. But there's sort of looking at all of the, the kinds of, of considerations. Uh, where does quality count? I guess that would be the question I'm asking. So let me throw that out there for you. Um, uh, hey, Lee, how you doing? Tuna, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Andrew? Uh, Tour Beyond. Uh, I don't know. There's something about them. I, I guess this, it, it's more of a of a thing. They They look not quite right. I mean, they, they, they don't, they probably, they look probably more in terms of some kind of minimal quality. Now by minimal quality, I mean, you're having, it doesn't take much to make them and they don't cost very much. That's what I mean. And, and a lot of them, that's another thing too. A lot of them are are simply, you know, like this one. They were made for a certain size uh, movement, and to fit fit that movement, and they, you know, they're not terrible uh, or anything, and you can tell the time and so forth. But there's something about them, I guess, that doesn't that probably not as good. One of the um, uh, things I've been considering, we've been starting to look at Gilo Shea. And they're, oh, I forgot the name of the company, but there's a really good uh, company has a very good reputation for making uh, good Gilo Shea dials. And there were there are two kinds that we were talking about. One was the uh, CNC, and they have a bunch of patterns, and you can choose, you know, you can choose what you want and say, okay, I want this. I want this type of Gilo Shea. And they have, but they also have um, Gilo Shea that you can have made with a Rose engine. And so what is the difference between Gilo Shea made with a Rose engine and Gilo Shea from one of the one of the existing patterns? I don't know. And if it's is it worth it and when is it worth it to say, okay, I'm going to get this kind of thing. Hey, Forbin. Ah, Commanders. Thank you, Washington. Hey, Lee. <laughs> Forbin, uh, when you looked at cases for the uh, Lurik project, were you given a selection of a dozen or so uh, what materials were offered? Um. Forbin, one thing I think we learned early on was to trust the people who were doing, or especially the designer. Uh, we would ask, there were a lot of questions that came down to what we should do. Now, I think 
because we knew or what little we did know, uh, Vooten, Lannan, and uh, Caton uh, company had a very good reputation. So we thought, well, let's go with them. And and that's another thing we were trying to do with the whole uh, Lareek project was to go with top quality. And that's, this is one of the reasons that I'm I, I'm talking about this today, uh, because not necessarily Lareek, but any group who wants to get together can or it's going to have these kinds of questions. And the questions are, you know, what quality is worth it? Uh, my little Soprod uh, A10, I mean, in terms of reliability, I'm sure it's just as reliable as the uh, much more expensive Vosher. But it's something else about it. Uh, I guess maybe it's the aesthetics of it. I'm not even sure. That's how come I wanted to talk to you guys about it. What do you think? How about enamel over the Gilo shade? Um, I mean, as a choice, um, it's hard to work with. Uh, enamel, I really like the looks of enamel. I like, um, you know, there's something about it that I really like. One of the problems with enamel is that it's it, it's very it you'll have you might have four or five that uh break before you get the one that is created the way you want it on every single watch uh and looking at and it depends i i'm sure that there's certain qualities and certain styles and certain things like that that will uh people would want enamel over Gilo Shea. Uh, my own feelings about it, oddly enough, are I don't care. I I, I become a I become a um a lacquer fan, uh L A C Q U E R. The the work that I've seen in lacquer, I just like it. There's something about it I like. Now Gilo Shea, uh some I've seen I really like. I, I'm just I just wonder is what is what is it worth? Is there a style with Gilo Shea that's really worth it? The same same with um, with enamel. Uh, another one too that would be even more interesting would be porcelain. Uh, this is you know you, you take a look at the old um, uh, pocket watches with porcelain dials. They are absolutely gorgeous. So you know these are questions I think that anybody putting a watch together. Uh, is is going to ask about? I mean, how how do you? What is the value of any quality? Uh, that I guess is is one of the things. Is that like? Where's my washer? This my washer. This is on a pretty small. I I think a relatively small um, movement, and especially compared to uh, the ETA, but. You know, you can put, you can have any kind of, you know, uh, anything that'll that's larger than the movement will work as a case for it. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? This is, you know, you're asking me. I'm asking you. Um, hi, Javier. Good and lacquered up. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, hater. Hi, John. Uh, watchmaking was historically an artist and trade. So when there's an option between stamping a pattern and hand drawing a pattern, I'd go for the latter. Me too. <laughs> I sort of like that idea as well. Um, now there's when you're when you're talking about Yilo Shea, I it, far as i can tell uh you're you're talking about either a rose engine and some guy working a rose engine and it zzz, zzz, goes through and takes out the and basically it's a type of engraving uh and then the uh it's, it's, they use something called a cnc machine now i'm not sure what that is uh i don't know whether that's something they plug in a pattern into that and that does all of the gilo shape for you um on my uh, FP Jorn, there it is, right inside of here, the Gilo Shea. And from what I understand, it's it's 
it's stamped, I guess. It's either stamped or CNC, one of the two, but it's not um, the, uh, the Rose engine. Hey, Junior. Hi, Mark. Uh, how about gold instead of any other material? Uh, yeah, I, you know, one of the things, Mark, if, if you look at the watches, even made in the early 2000s, gold was about $200 an ounce then. You can look it up and, and find out exactly what it is. It's 10 times that much now. Uh, he, here, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I don't know whether uh, the price of gold would, would justify what you get out of it. And that, that is a decision. Now I have, I can't tell the difference between steel, a steel case, a platinum case and a white gold case. And I have all three. And if I lined them up and no one ever told me which was, which I couldn't tell the difference. And so it's like, well, you know, what's the point? Um, so, you know, these are things I guess you have to answer. One thing about porcelain, uh, bearing any sharp, uh, drops from this hand, it'll look almost new forever. Yeah, porcelain is just gorgeous. You know, that would be an interesting thing to come up with a porcelain watch. Now, that would be something that would really be original, but that would probably, I'm thinking, you know, maybe a couple of years, is you want to plan that? <laughs> how, do you, how do you get porcelain? I don't know where'd you go to a, uh, you know, to a who makes porcelain these days? I'm not really sure, especially. I guess you could have it on bathroom fixtures or something like that, uh, but I don't know. Uh, but it would be an interesting thing to take a look at that instead of, let's say, enamel, uh, which has a similar effect but not the same. Were you given photos or video of watch being made or is it inside of a factory or plant? No, no, it wasn't that at all. What, in terms of, of the process going through, we went through an extensive design process uh, that starts with, what were they called? Um, mood boards, that we'd get these mood boards to see if it had the right mood. <laughs> it was really a very interesting process. Like I said, um, I, boy, I thought I knew what, about these things, but I, I didn't. Um, Yeah, no, uh, it wasn't a fact. I mean, the factory part, uh, they're all going to be handmade. Now, one of the things that I had asked uh, Aganar, I say, look, you know, when you have somebody putting a, a movement together for us, we'd like a video of it. And uh, haven't, well, we wasn't sure whether they wanted to do that or not. I said, well, at least do this. When you, when you case it up, have a video of them casing it up in case we have to uncase it. I don't know what I, I don't know where they're going to get that, but it's not like, you know, uh, <laughs> it's I don't know. That's a really good question. I, I would love to see that happen. Hi, Rohit. How you doing? We've got a hundred year old trench watch with a porcelain dial and it looks like it was made yesterday. Yeah. Hi, least time. How are things in Hamburg? A good hope lever watch. I'm not sure what that is. That sounds cool though. Uh, for fine bone porcelain is true art. Yeah. Now this, see, this would be something that, you know, you, you start asking those kinds of questions, uh, probably to find out. You know, does anybody has anybody done it? There was a guy locally who did, who sort of did um, enamel that we were thinking about using on another watch project. And he sort of ghosted it. <laughs> if we're talking movements, Aganor, for instance, uh, have all kinds of uh, Easter eggs inside their creations next to the quality it adds. Yeah, uh, Aganor is like, I, I, I think Vosher, uh, and I, well, Let's see. The ones that I, I think are of good quality, and you can um, 
correct me if you think I'm wrong on this. I think the Canode are good quality, and you have a lot of variation because uh, Jean uh, Francois Mojon, I believe, will say, "Look, you know, you guys want this or you want this. We can fix it up for you." Well, he's one. Of, he's a top watchmaker, um, but I think they have a lot more off-the-shelf kinds of things. And you can take a lot of the off-the-shelves and put them together. Uh, Vosher, I know, I know do. They have, they have a, right now, I think they only have automatic movements, not positive. But I was going through their catalog, and you, I think what they have, they have like one or two basic movements, and then they have different variations on those basic movements, which I, and that's true with most watch companies. Um, and so if you have quality at the base of it, then, you know, then it can move throughout a, a whole lot of different designs. And that's something else. And in, in looking at, at this guy right here from Boisure, and you have the, the uh, uh, micro rotor on the back, and I think there's several other options that, that uh, Vosher has for that. The other one really only has two options, and that is um, UWD, uh, Uren Burks Dresden. Now, here was a, the, they have two. One's called a 33.1, and the other one's called a 33.2. These are beautifully, beautifully uh, designed movements. The first one, the 33.1, was designed and made by Marco Lang before he left Langenheim. And later on, uh, I think in the last year or so, they came up with one called the 33.2. And the 33.2 is center second, second instead of eccentric seconds. Is, that's on the 33.1. Um, I don't really know. Uh, some of you may know, especially guys from Germany. Um, the of uh, what Langenheim is now doing. I'm really not sure. The guy who's heading up Langenheim, as far as the movements are concerned, I think he came from Alanga. I'm not positive, but I think it, I, Art uh, Leyenberger knows uh, better than I would on that. But see, th this is, here you have basically one movement uh, with two different styles to it. Now, with um, Aganor, it's a whole different ball game because one of the rules they have is that they each movement they make for a customer has to be unique. In other words, somebody can't go in there and say, "Hey, we want the uh, the AGH sixty eight oh one." You know, that belongs to the Larique group. Now they can have modifications on it, uh, and that's that's uh, so it's like totally a different movement. But that's this is a very different kind of thing. Um, I don't think that every time you, th that we go back to uh, Agano, we're going to say, we want a new one. <laughs> we, I, I think we're going to be reusing uh, some of the ones we do develop. I hope so anyway. Uh, but here again, we're dealing with, with uh, really good quality. Uh, and that's, that's the, I, I think the essence of it, going with a good ETA, a good grade ETA, uh, I think you're going to have a very reliable movement. I really do. I mean, it's sort of like it's reliable. I, I don't think you have the craftsmanship, but that may not be something that is as, as important to you as simply just sort of a good workhorse of a of a movement that's not going to break on you. Casing the joint. Okay, drinking tea from the English Bone China. One of life's great luxuries. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that'll be cool. Yeah, now, that's an interesting thing. 
uh, rancher. You've got a uh, you're you're dealing with a if you have somebody who's who's going to make a, a a dial for you, and the uh, the hands for that. Uh, <laughs> There's no difference between a the sixteen to four ninety eight and the um, uh, <laughs> the do Ford simplicity sure look a lot alike. Uh, thoughts on lane watches? I'm trying to think, I you know, I don't know that much about them. Anybody else want to? Uh, uh, anyone else want to have a? Any thoughts on Lane? A lot of people ask about them. They seem to be a up and coming brand. You know, the other part of it, and and the reason I keep talking about it in terms of parts, in terms of the quality of the case, the quality of the dial, the quality of the hands, and the quality of the movement, is that I think for forever, <laughs> and even more so, for the quality. Because I think that you you have different kinds of organizations, and one kind of organization is a mutual benefit organization. And essentially, what Larique is is that type of organization where the prime beneficiary are the members, in other words, people who are who all put their watch together. Now, um, the Michael Brands, the prime beneficiary is a watchmaker or the sort of watchmaker business, I guess. And what what they need to do is is to have a profit. And there's and they want to keep the price down. The only way to do that is stick in a Myota instead of an ETA uh, or something or a Salida uh, instead of a Myota uh, will increase the price, but it'll increase the, at least the perceived quality of it. And and I think that's that's a fight they have to fight, that those that we don't because we're not saying okay, uh, you know how much profit are we going to have on this? Rather, we're saying, you know, what is the quality, and is is what we're paying for the quality worth it? Now, in the long run, you take here's let me go back to this guy, this for sure movement. You have let's say a twelve hundred dollar movement. Well. Uh, and you can, you know, get a case and so on and so forth. Uh, let's say uh, another thousand for the case and uh, a couple hundred for the uh, dial and a couple hundred for the hands. Um, or not a couple hundred for the hands, but about the unit price would be about, I mean, a really good hands wouldn't be that much. <laughs> so uh, Suddenly you're saying, okay, well, let's see, I got a really good movement. So I ended up with a $3,000 watch without having to, uh, to really compromise one bit on the quality of anything because there's, I don't have to think about it in terms of, well, uh, you know, what kind of profit margin and the, what's the advertising, all of these things gonna, going to cost. And so what you may get, even on a, here's a movement that costs, easily 10 times more than a really good reliable movement like this uh this soprod um it's it turns out you know you're you're not ending up spending that much money uh oh uh, it's prime pen time <laughs> okay all right uh weird okay all right well anyway i just wanted to 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 kick that around and and um been eating and drinking off bone china nigel <laughs> you got, yeah i think you know there's i don't know I, I i think the possibility though is 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 to look into those things and see what you know what's what and you know, rather than uh, as Mark had asked about, he said, well, what about gold? Well, I haven't asked about gold just because the price is so high right now. And every time I see a watch with gold, it literally the, you know, $10,000 more than the steel version. And so I really haven't looked into that. 
Uh, but that's something that may be something worth looking into. So anyway, uh, let's see. Okay. So proud of so proud. Okay, Foreman. Okay, guys. Well, listen, that's just I just want to talk about that because I, I think a lot of the quality we've been afraid to talk about is quality that is in the very high priced watches. But the quality itself in the parts that make it a high quality watch may not be that big of a bump. So anyway, something to think about. Take care and um, come up with some more ideas. <laughs>